So there you go. Flight time on a Chinese AliExpress paramotor. Not good. Good morning everybody or if you're watching this in the afternoon good afternoon everybody uh, that noise is a highway just not fantastic for the video creation stuff we're going to be flying the air jet again today uh, recently I'm sure you've all seen Tucker got put out a video of chronicling his own air jet uh, initially it looked like he bought the same one I did at least the pictures in the advertisement are the same but it turns out his frame is actually a little nicer than mine. It certainly wasn't scuffed up quite as bad. So uh, anyways, since then, the views on my Airjet RC airplane powered Chinese AliExpress paramotor have gone through the roof. Uh, a lot of interest in it. So I figured I should dust it back off. It's been a while and it's been because it hasn't been starting. This setup is for an RC airplane. So it came with no starter. The issue then is you need to be able to start it while it's on your back and uh, the company who put this together did a I don't want to call it a hack job but it was definitely a modification of the original engine that used RC car hardware inside of a large gear uh, it's called a one-way bearing and if you know RC cars you know those aren't super uh, reliable so mine gave out about five hours worth of flying I uh, went to replace it, it lasted four more starts, and then it broke again. So I got in touch with the buddy, Ted. He lives near me. Um, I actually met him because he saw one of my paramotor posts on a local group. And Ted races and builds go-karts competitively, like national championship stuff. Anyways, small engines are his bread and butter. He machined out the original gear. Now, my problem was the one-way bearing that originally worked was almost impossible to replace. It was a six hour job, and uh, I'm gonna be honest with you, it was not fun. So now, he's machined out the back of this gear so that you can actually see the one-way bearing in there. If this one-way bearing fails again, it's no longer a six hour job, it's a 30 minute job because I just fit my socket in there, tap it with a hammer, out it comes, I put a new one on. So we are going to fly the air jet today, and we're gonna to see how long it will actually fly on a tank of fuel. Um, my guess is about an hour, but I don't really know because I haven't run it out of fuel. So we're gonna try to do that today. Drop a comment down below, how long do you think it's gonna last? And uh, let's go get in the air. All right, I have started a timer along with Gaggle. I guess Gaggle would tell me how long the flight is, but the timer counts the engine warming up here. All right. Give it a go. Well, according to Gaggle, I've got 45 minutes of fuel left. By the way, I'm doing this to see how long I can fly because I want to use this to self-launch for uh, thermaling. I've already got a reserve figured out and all that. But we're just seeing how long I can actually go for. Look at this view though. I'm right in the middle of this break in the fog. Gorgeous. Wow. Beautiful. 
All right, I can't help myself. Let's go catch some fog. This is class G, so I just have to remain clear of clouds so I can fly right up next to it. Jeez. Beautiful. This is it, guys. This is this is why I do powered paragliding. You're not gonna get this kind of view from any other kind of flying. I'm also interested in seeing what it takes to keep my altitude. So right now I'm running at around 5,000 RPMs. And Gaggle puts me at a very slow 0.3 feet per second climb. 4,800 RPMs. Nope. Still climbing at 4,800. This is 4,300. Climbing descending, hitting this around 1200 feet. So it looks like 4500 RPM is level flight, and this engine is capping out in a climb at 58. So I've got some margin, it's not a lot. Alright, Gangle says I've been in the air for 20 minutes. I'm looking at a half a tank. <laughs> <laughs> this thing is so inefficient. I love it. It's so dumb. Don't buy one. Okay. I am showing a quarter of a tank. But I have climbed to 1,600 feet. Even after just screwing around down low. So, I'm going to turn back towards my LZ. Just so that I'm up above it my motor does die, because it will. So, we're shooting for just over half an hour of endurance. My house is over there, and when I was driving here today, I was worried I wouldn't get to fly. One with visibility and all, but geez, gorgeous. I've never had a bad morning flight. <laughs> They're all amazing. I'm not sure if uh, anyone can see it in all of my other cameras, but that's my fuel level after half an hour. Mm. All right, Jackal just gave me 30 minutes in the air and it's running like crap. So, uh, either my tune just went absolute sh or it's taken up bad stuff. So I, if I ease it to idle, that's really low for this engine. 1,000 RPMs, 900, dude. There it is. All right, there we go. <laughs> 33 minutes. <laughs> 33 minutes. See if it'll restart. No, it restarted. Well. Nope. Get a little more out of it. Nope, that's it. That's all she's got. 
drops in the tank left. 35 minutes, guys. Not a big deal. You'll notice we're directly over our LZ. It's like I planned that or something. This is really cool. Yeah, oh, look, here's a little pocket of fog. Hello, fog pocket. Somebody just honk at me? All right, I'm gonna take the shorter grass with the penalty of having to walk further. Oh my god. <laughs> Every time I fly this thing, I'm reminded of how it doesn't weigh anything. Okay guys, that's it for flight time on the Airjet DLE 170 paramotor. Actually, the engine is a knockoff of the DLE 170. It's a UFP 170, but whatever, we're splitting hairs. So, obviously I was worried about fuel consumption. We stayed in the air for 38 minutes according to Gaggle, and you see we're pretty much empty. Uh, one other thing I was curious about was battery consumption, actually. If you remember when I first got this motor and did the review on it, the ignition is not magneto-driven, it's powered by this battery. So when this battery goes dead, the motor dies, regardless of how much gas you've got. Now this battery is a 22 volt 6S LiPo battery that I actually use in my drones and uh, it's only 1300 milliamps so I was kind of concerned about between electric starting and running the engine how long would this battery actually last. So I installed a voltmeter on the throttle here and it's the blue number down below. I took off with 22.8 volts. So I landed somewhere between 22.7 and 22.6 which is not a lot for a half hour flight so that battery is going to last a long time i don't think we're going to run into any issues there so there you go flight time on a chinese aliexpress paramotor not good i expected about a gallon an hour it's really more like two i might be able to lean it out some but i want to keep it rich for the sake of the engine uh, these things don't like to overheat at all and would i recommend this to anybody probably not um, doesn't go very far, doesn't go very long, doesn't climb very fast. But if like me, you're looking for something small that you can just chuck in the back of your car and not have to take it apart and uh, lightweight so that you can self-launch for ridge soaring or thermaling, this might be an option, but don't make it your first paramotor, please. If you haven't already, check out the video I made where I point out all the flaws this thing had before I went to try to fly it. Thanks for coming along with me, everybody. If you enjoyed it, I appreciate a like on the video. If you like this kind of content, I'd appreciate a subscribe. No, Tucker Gott did not steal this paramotor idea from me. I actually let him know it was a piece of crap when I saw that he was thinking of buying one. We're all in it together. Thanks for watching. <laughs>